We've seen how AI can analyze images and PDFs, but AI can do something even more impressive. It can create images from scratch based on text descriptions. For this next lesson, we'll build an image generator with the AI SDK. There are quite a few image generation models available, but for this course, we will use DAL E3 from OpenAI. It's not the best model available, but it is one of the cheapest. Once you understand how image generation works, you can always upgrade to more sophisticated models based on your needs and budget. Like all other lessons, we'll tackle this image generator in two parts. First, we'll create a route handler to communicate with Dolly. Then we'll build a UI where users can enter prompts and see the generated images. Back in VS Code, in the API folder, create a new folder called generate image. Inside, create a route.ts file. Start with the post handler that accepts the request parameter. So export, async function, post, request of type, request, and then add the imports we need. Import OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI and the generate image function. Experimental generate image from AI. It is marked as experimental, but by the time you're following this tutorial, it might be stable, so check the documentation. We will, however, import it as an alias, as generate image. Within the post handler, get the prompt from the request. So destructure prompt by awaiting request.json. Now we will call generate image with the configuration. So await generate image. We pass in an object. And first we specify the image model we want to use. Property is model. And we call openai.imageModel. And we specify dolly3. Then we pass the prompt from the request. So prompt, key, and value, both are the same. Now for image generation, we can also specify the dimensions of the image using the size property. Let's set it to 1024 by 1024. Finally, we pass any optional provider options. So provider options. And in this case, we'll use the OpenAI provider and set the style to vivid and quality to HD. Style, vivid, quality HD. The generate image function returns an object with the generated image, which we can destructure and return as JSON. So const image destructured by awaiting generate image and return response.json image.base64. We're returning the base64 encoded image data, which the browser can display directly. Finally, let's wrap everything in proper error handling. So try, close it after response, catch block, get access to error, console.error, error generating image, log the error, and return new response, failed to generate image. Status 500. The route handler is ready. Now for the UI. In the UI folder, Create a new folder called generate image and inside create a page.tsx file. Let's start with the basic component structure. We will use the exact same layout as our other pages, so I'm going to paste the code to save us some time. We have the use client directive at the top since this is a client component. The component name is generate image page. We'll start with a container div that centers the content and adds some padding. We'll leave space for the image to be displayed. So image will go here. At the bottom goes the form. We add a flex container with an input and a send button side by side. All elements are styled with Tailwind CSS to look nice. And you can copy these styles from any of the previous pages. The code of course is also available on my GitHub repository and the link is in the description. You can see this UI in the browser by navigating to localhost 3000 slash UI slash generate hyphen image. You can see the form at the bottom and space at the top to render our image. The next step is to make our form interactive. So at the top, import use state from React. Within the component, create a new prompt state variable. Prompt set a function set prompt 
and the initial value is an empty string. Bind this to the input field. Type is equal to text, value is equal to prompt, and on change, we get hold of the event and we call set prompt, passing in event.target.value. Let's also make the placeholder describe the image to suit the component. Value is not a string, but the state variable. Next, let's add the functionality to call our API. We need more state variables and a submit handler. So use state. First, we need image source and set image source to store the generated image source. The initial value is null and the type is string or null. Next, we need ease loading and set ease loading with an initial value of false. So the type is boolean and this is for loading states. The third state variable is error. The setter function is set error and the initial value is null. The type is string or null and this is for error handling. Next, we define our submit handler. So const handle submit is equal to an async function. The function receives an event that is of type react.form event HTML form element. And within the function body, first we prevent the default submission. So event dot prevent default. Next, we set the loading state. So set is loading to true. Clear any previous image. So set image source to null and reset the input. Set prompt to an empty string. We will also clear any errors if they've been previously set. Then in a try block, make a fetch request to our API with the prompt. So const response is equal to await fetch. The endpoint is slash API slash generate image, which is the route handler we just created. Specify an options object. The method is post headers. We set content type to application JSON and then body is the prompt json.stringify an object with key and value set to prompt. Await the response and then the data. So await response.json and we assign this to a constant called data. If the response is not okay, throw an error with the error message or a generic error message. So if not response.ok, throw a new error, data.error, or something went wrong. If the request was successful, convert the base64 response you get back from the API into a data URL that the browser can display. Set image source, backticks, data, colon, image slash PNG, colon base64, dollar curly braces, data. And then we add a catch block for error handling. So error, console.error, error generating image, followed by the error, and set error, error instance of error. And we do this for TypeScript, error.message. Otherwise, something went wrong. Please try again. Finally, we clean up the loading state. Set is loading to false. Now, our handle submit is complete. So let's connect this to our form on submit is equal to handle submit and then update the JSX to render content based on the state variables. For the button, we'll add disabled and this is going to be equal to ease loading. I will also update the classes to account for disabled state. And while we're at it, let's change the button text to say generate instead of send. Next, at the top, we render the error message. So within the outer div container, error, and if that exists, we render the error. We'll also add tailwind classes. Text read 500, margin bottom four. If there is no error, we render the image. Curly braces again. First, we need to handle the loading state. So if it is loading, we're going to add a div tag that reflects a loading state 
with animate pulse class. And if it is not loading, we check if the image source exists. And if it does, we render the image component image, which we are going to import from next slash image. So make sure to import it at the top. We set alt to generated image. We're going to add some tailoring classes for styling. Source is equal to image source. Width 1024, which we specified in our route handler. And the same for height. And we will wrap this content in a div tag. We will add some tailoring classes to make sure the loading state is displayed. When loading, we show a pulsing gray box. And when not loading, we show the image if it exists. All right, our UI is now complete. Navigate to slash UI slash generate. We should see the placeholder, describe the image and the generate button. Describe the image, a realistic corgi dog. And when you press enter, you should see the loading state. Please note that image generation takes at least five to 10 seconds. And there you go. We have an image that is AI generated based on our prompt. Remember, Dolly 3 is not the best model. While we did get a corgi dog, the realistic part is a bit questionable. The more recent and advanced models can generate very realistic images. And the more descriptive your prompt, the better the results. You can include details about style, lighting, colors, and even composition. Please remember that image generation can be way more expensive than text generation. So keep an eye on your usage dashboard during development. If you have the budget, I highly recommend swapping Dolly 3 from OpenAI for one of the better models. Trust me, the results will be night and day. But to summarize what we've learned, we created a route handler that communicates with Doll E3 image model using the openai.imageModel method. We specify dimensions and provider options like style and quality. We return the base64 encoded image data as response. In the UI, we make a post request to the route handler and handle the response. We display the image using the image component from Next.js. We also handle loading and error states. We are able to generate images using AI.